Welcome to a Legendarium special about the history behind Washington Irving's Sleepy Hollow. In this episode, we will learn about what inspired Washington Irving to create one of the world's most famous ghost stories. Washington Irving, born in 1783, was the last of 11 children, eight of whom lived into adulthood. His parents named him after George Washington, the United States Commander-in-Chief during the American Revolution. At the age of six, young Irving attended Washington's inauguration in his hometown of New York City. Later, Irving wrote an account of Washington's swearing-in that included the likely fictional story that Washington added, so help me God, to his oath of office. His older brothers often supported Washington Irving as he pursued writing. He even started the literary magazine Salmanugi with his brother William. In 1798, however, yellow fever reached epidemic proportions in New York, killing more than 800 people in a single summer within a city of only 10,000 people at the time. Fear of the disease drove the Irving family to send their children to stay with a friend in Terrytown, located in nearby Westchester County. Here, Irving became familiar with the hamlet of Sleepy Hollow, the setting of his most famous story, fittingly titled The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. While living in the Hudson Valley, the region's folklore, which abounds with ghosts and goblins, made a lasting impression upon the young Irving. Yet the days when he would craft ghost stories lay in the future. As a reporter for his brother Peter's newspaper, The Morning Chronicle, Irving covered the treason trial of Aaron Burr, a former vice president who tried to seize the Louisiana Territory and make himself emperor in New Orleans. As time went on, Washington Irving wrote material that included fiction, biography, travelogue, essays, and even a work on the Prophet Muhammad. From 1815 to 1820, much to the scorn of his fellow American writers, he traveled throughout Europe, collecting folk tales and ghost stories. Irving described them as a budget of wonderful stories from every old woman I meet. Several of these tales concerned headless horsemen that galloped through the European imagination since the Middle Ages. Irving learned of the Grimm Brothers' German story of Hans Jägenfuhl, or Hans Hunting Devil, a man who is condemned to ride through the ages headless. In Ireland, he learned of a creature called Dullahan, who appeared to those about to die and blinded anybody unlucky enough to see him if they did not have an appointment with death. Irving's mentor, Sir Walter Scott, penned an English translation of Der Wild Jäger, or The Wild Huntsman, in 1796. This German poem turns on a wicked hunter, or wild grave, who is himself hounded to hell for his sins. So Washington Irving had plenty of inspiration when, in 1820, he wrote The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, the tale of the the famously tall and gaunt Ichabod Crane, whom Irving described as one might have mistaken him for some scarecrow eloped from a cornfield. Irving's story takes place, unsurprisingly, in the New York village of Sleepy Hollow, located in Westchester County. Lanky newcomer and schoolmaster Ichabod Crane, himself from Connecticut, courts Katrina Van Tassel, a young heiress also being pursued by the Dutchman Brom Bones. At a party at the Van Tassel farm, after nearly a year of courting Katrina, Crane is finally rebuffed by the Van Tassel family, and Katrina insists that she only strung him along to force Brom Bones to take the prospect of marriage a little more seriously. A distraught Ichabod is then chased by a headless horseman, who may or may not be his rival, who hurls a pumpkin at Ichabod, knocking him from his horse. The schoolmaster then vanishes without a trace, leaving only a broken pumpkin behind. 
Did the headless horseman claim him as a victim, or did his rival simply frighten him off? Of course, Washington Irving set his story in Westchester County, including some real-life locations such as the Old Dutch Church and Phillipsburg Manor. One of the most important locations is Major Andre's tree, a tree in the real-life Sleepy Hollow, where a Major John Andre, a British spy, was hung by the revolutionaries, and in Washington Irving's retelling, that tree had been regarded with horror by the locals ever since. Indeed, the deeply superstitious Ichabod Crane went to great lengths to avoid the tree and only walked directly past it because of his distraught state over being rebuffed by Katrina. Perhaps that tree signaled him passing from the world of the living into the realm of the goblins. Crane's love interest herself, Katrina Van Tassel, is a member of the Dutch-descended great landowners. Of course, New York had been colonized by the Dutch before being conquered by England generations later, and some of those old Dutch families kept their sprawling estates along the Hudson River. They presided over a semi-feudal system collecting rents from tenant farmers. The system would only break down during the rent wars set off by the Panic of 1837. In writing the story, Washington Irving hoped to show that American writers could separate from their European masters by writing stories set in the United States in the American idiom. He joined other writers in this endeavor like James Feminor Cooper and later Edgar Allan Poe. He created something truly original by mashing up local color with old world folklore and New York speech patterns. Given that his work won the admiration of Charles Dickens himself, it is safe to say that Washington Irving succeeded. Over his career, Irving coined many phrases still used today. He gave New York its second name of Gotham and called New Yorkers Knickerbockers. He even gave the United States its first account of Santa Claus in his book A History of New York. A literary celebrity in his day, he kept company with other writers like Edgar Allan Poe and even became a guest at the White House during the administration of his fellow New Yorker, Martin Van Buren. In the years since, Sleepy Hollow has been adapted to film several times. Of course, interest in Sleepy Hollow spikes during the Halloween season. That also means up to a quarter million visitors to the village of Sleepy Hollow each year, along with other historic Hudson Valley properties. Popular events include Horseman's Hollow and Irving's Legend, which draw both locals and tourists from across the country. To this day, it is a major economic engine for Westchester County, and a reminder of of what an impression that this story has made upon the English-speaking imagination. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.